All right, you guys, so we have been on the full-on scavenger hunt today. I have looked everywhere for that hole saw, and my buddy Anthony Simo has the cabinet shop. He goes, hey, man, go buy Kintec. They're on Cypress Drive. I'm like, there's no way they're going to have it. Walked in, they're like, here you go. So if you need any kind of specialty tool, if you're here in Jupiter to Cuesta area, Kintec on Cypress Drive. These cats right here know what's up, and they just made my day. If you're putting in a Suzuki gauge, it's a 3 and 3 eighths hole. So... You gotta be very careful also. I don't wanna scratch any of my other stuff. That's where the gauge is going, right there. That's what we're talking about, right there. Today, I finally got all my electronics installed. There have been many people along the way that made this possible, but now I got my chart plotter, my bottom machine, rod and reels, live bait well, cast net, in a heart full of excitement right now. We're just doing something like I was a kid. I'm gonna go out here and figure out what is possible. If the ocean's calm, we're gonna go out. We're just gonna fish. I don't care what we fish for. We're just going fishing and we're gonna have a great day. And I really appreciate all you guys being a part of Deer Meat for dinner. All right, first things first, we're out here. I mean, I'm a live bait fisherman. I love fishing live bait. And if you want to be successful off Jupiter, live bait really is important. Using a green number six sabiki with a two ounce lead. And when you find the bait, you're looking at your bottom machine. When you find the bait, you want to drop your, your lead all the way to the bottom and just duck, 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 duck. Sometimes they want you to make long movements. Sometimes they want you just to barely jig it. The key is catch them. All right, you guys, so we've got a bait well full of bait. The ocean looks beautiful. We've got a really strong north tide, deep blue, purplish looking water. I guarantee you there's gonna be fish here. When we have this condition, overcast skies, very blue water with a strong north tide, I'm looking for blackfin tuna and possibly a yellowfin tuna. When I'm doing that, I use a circle hook with 60 pound leader. I'm using pink Andy here. Uh, you could use fluorocarbon, but hey, this is what I got. This is what I'm using. Hook him right through the clear part of his nose, just like that. Get him in the water. I'm using a black fin rod with a Shimano Talica 25 reel. So we're fishing three rods, one out of the back, one out of the middle, one out of the front. If you're wondering why some of that's yellow, I have like 150 yards of braid on top as a top shot. Hello? Oh, it's picking it up, whatever it is. Here we go. Feels like a little dolphin. Something that's small, whatever it is. Yeah, a little dolphin out there. Whenever I say little, I mean like real little. Look at him cutting through the water. He's like, I want to be a big guy. Nice thing about the circle hooks is you typically hook them in the corner of the jaw and he was too small, I was gonna let him go anyway, but who knows, maybe we catch a bigger one. Nice thing about having a big live bait well, you can keep plenty of baits nice and alive, nice frisky baits. Get out there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh, getting one right here, come on. Oh, oh, gosh, dog it. Got a fish right here. 
Oh, dang, oh, I just got sharked. I felt the shark just wail on him. Come on, Mr. Fish, let's do it. We're looking for a tuna, y'all. We're looking for a tuna. Bumblebee tuna? Oh, here we go. I don't know what it is. It ate really weird. Like, I have no idea what this could be. Look at the shark. <laughs> that bonita was like, hey, I'll just swim to the boat. Please unhook me and let me go because sharks, they ain't messing around. Nice fish. Oh, it's either Wahoo or Kingfish. We're grabbing the gaff. This is. King mackerel. On, on, on. Come here, buddy. That one will go on ice. There you go. Kingfish. First fish in the New Ingle. This is a nice fish, dude. This might be the old black bin right here. Bonita. See how the see how the hook? That circle hook will hook them right in the corner of the jaw almost every time. Take it out. Let him go. Well, that's one way to do it, folks. I literally just said to John, I was like, hey, get the camera. Let's go. And that happened. So on that note, we've got dinner. I'm trying not to stay out too terribly late. And uh, we're gonna head to the house. Let's go clean this kingfish. And around here, everyone says, oh, kingfish is terrible. Well, we're gonna find out. We were out fishing all day and burned seven and a half gallons of fuel. That's awesome. We were averaging like almost 3.5 miles per gallon. That, that's re remarkable. Hello, fellas.
So out here off of Florida, I mean anywhere in the eastern, southeastern United States, king mackerel are really prevalent. And that one is a good eating size, probably about seven, seven, seven pounds, something like that. Here's a trick. We're gonna cook this with the skin on. Just take the back of your knife. Sometimes, see all that gunk right there? You just take the back of your knife and it'll, you can clean that skin up just like that. You don't want to do this with a sharp side of your knife though. I mean, you can, I just don't suggest. Oh, you know what I just about forgot? You guys were asking, when are we gonna do the drawing for the trip to Staniel Key? We're giving away four trips. We're gonna pull four names randomly. It's using this thing called Woo Box. You enter and literally we have nothing to do with who gets drawn. It, it pulls four names randomly. Those four people, four of y'all, are then going to get to bring a friend. Me, Johnny, all eight of you, we're gonna fly down to Staniel Key, have a rad time. We're gonna do all kinds of cool stuff. And we're gonna pull that name Monday, Memorial Day. Um, we're gonna pull it at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So I'm, on Monday at 3.50, I'm gonna go live. I'll be talking and having a good time answering a bunch of questions. Then at four o'clock, we're gonna pull the names and y'all are gonna know who won. So if you need to know more about that, just check it out in the description below. Watch this. Look how easy that knife just cuts through there. Like hot knife through butter. It's gonna get to the backbone, sort of just tilt your knife up gent ever so gently. Then pretty that is. Now, come in here. Take, take your knife. Just follow it right on up. Cut into the head just like that. Coming up the crabs. Take your knife and just lay that right off there. That's your bones. Right in here, you got another line of bones right there. So just very gently let your knife find its way down. Cut out that center line. Take that home and put it in the broiler. And always remember, when you're broiling fish, leave the door open. Thanks, Walter. Well, what a glorious day it has been. Look at that big old fat sack of fish. Now, I'm really excited because I'm super hungry. I got a shower, got all cleaned up, and I'm ready to cook. Sarah's off running errands with the girls right now, so I'm just gonna cook a piece big enough for me. For seasoning, I'm just gonna use a little bit of Everglades Original and paprika. Paprika gives it a nice color, beautiful flavor. We're cooking this fish with the skin side down so you're only seasoning one piece of it. Now, to really liven things up, take this little grater and we're gonna put some lemon zest on it. Oh yeah. Then, this is fresh ginger. Yep. 
You don't need a lot. Oh, beautiful. Cut a little lemon. A little garlic. Finish it off with just some shallots. Take our fish. Right on there. This right here. All that butter and herb and spice will just fall down and just become like this love potion. Let's try not to burn ourselves. Oh man, that looks delicious. Look how nice. Oh, look, and the skin stayed on. That's the skin right there. Wow. Now that right there is a thing of beauty. Some people may laugh. Oh, it's just a little kingfish. Well, guess what? That is beautiful. Wow. Mmm. Mmm, that, look how moist that is. I don't know if y'all can see that. That is so beautiful. The flavor just jumps out at you. Man. Mm. The shallot, the ginger, lemon zest, the moisture in this. I don't know if y'all can see, I want, I want you to be able to see. Look how moist that fish is. So delicious. I'll agree, if you freeze a kingfish, or if you don't ice it properly, you might as well not even keep it because it won't be good. But this fish was immediately put straight on ice covered up, left on ice until it was time to clean them. Once I cleaned the fish, took the bloodline out, the bones, packed it away in a nice Ziploc, put it back on ice until it was time to cook. Now, the results are phenomenal. I suggest trying this yourself. The shallot is just phenomenal on there. Well. I don't want to be rude, make y'all watch me eat all this. So this is all I've got for you today. Hope you enjoyed it. Life is good, and I'm ready to fish. Take care, God bless. We go.